Welcome to the Airflow Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Thomas, and this is the place where Kingdom heirs go to be informed and inspired. So sit back, relax, and flow with me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Airflow Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Thomas, and I just thank you for taking some time to come and flow with me today. For this episode, I want to kind of go back a little bit and and talk a little bit about one of the previous episodes that I had, which is called The Fatherhood. And in the episode, I just talked about some of the importance of a father and really laid down a foundation. And it was part one. Uh, For this part, I really want to take you guys as the listeners through the journey that I've had and just my experience as a father thus far. You know, I've been blessed to be a father of three um, for over 18 years. And I started as a father, you know, relatively young. I mean, I became a father by the age of um, 24. So, you know, I, I was a young man still trying to figure out things, of us, as I said before, and just going through the, the different emotions and, and just everything that that came with knowing that I was responsible for this little light skinned baby that I had that we my wife and I had you know it was it was crazy so this episode I just really want to talk about what fatherhood has meant to me what the journey means and and you know obviously still knee deep in it and but I love it I love being a father and I think that is what drove me from a young age to want to be a, a, a parent, wanted to be a husband. And my, my, my plan was to be a husband first and then to be a father. And, and so far that's been working out well. Um, it hasn't been all peaches and cream. I think as any parent, any father would know, there's always its challenges, but I'm proud of where I am today, but I didn't get here without having models, you know, role models and having a great, the best partner in life that I can have in my wife, Cassandra, or KK as, you know, I've shared with you all before her nickname. Um, but just understanding, you know, when I grew up, I grew up in a house and I mentioned it before with my, my, my three siblings. It was my mom, my dad, and then it was, you know, my older sister. I'm the second oldest. So my older sister, Shani Sunita. It's her real name, or Shani. Um, me, then is my younger sister Shante. We call her Nicknack, and then my little brother, our little brother Jason. And you know, having my dad there, you know, was a great thing because I look at him, and now I have even a different, you know, more reverence for him even today than when I had when I was a kid, because I'm a father of my own, and just to understand some of the things that me and him used to get into it about as a kid I see now especially when I was going through my age where I was smelling myself and I thought I was the man and you know as most teenagers do you know they think they know more than what their their parents know and um you know I'm I experienced that and I'm experiencing that now you know I think everybody goes through those phases but just knowing all of the pressure that he had on him as the man being a husband, being a father, you know, trying to be, a, you know, make sure he was a provider and, and, you know, not just being there, not just being a provider. Cause I, I know in the previous episode, I said, you know, one of the good things about uh, one of the characters of a father is being present. Um, not just a financial presence, but being there spiritually, emotionally. And that was my dad. That is my dad. He's still that way today. You know, I was blessed, you know, my family and I moved into our new home. You know, he was able to come down and spend a week with us and hang out and just, you know, having him here and just seeing the, the joy and the pride in his eyes. And, and, you know, just as he was here, like I felt that. And it was a proud moment for me because it's always good to know that you've done well. You know, if you think about it, even with God, you know, you know, this always says that you would want it when it's when the day is when it's all over for your life. Um, you want the, the the master, you want the king to say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." 
And so when I think about my dad and he always tells all of his kids, you know, he tells us all that he's proud of us for everything that we've done, you know, accomplished families and, you know, careers and just the things that we're doing. He's always been proud of us. But even it now, it just means even it means even more as a as I'm a father and continue to grow and do things, because I know that for him, the biggest joy that he had was always knowing that he raised his kids to be successful. We weren't out in the streets doing nothing crazy. And and let me preface this with we weren't we're not perfect. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm not I'm not the, the, the perfect father. I'm not the perfect husband. There are things that I continue to work on. And I say that not to diminish the situation, but just to make sure that everybody understands that it's not about perfection. It's about being striving to be the best that you can be and, and, and continuing to grow. Even my dad, he just celebrated 69 years. Um, his birthday was was this past week. And, you know, just knowing that he's still in, in this day and age in this season of his life, he's still finding ways to be a better dad. You know, my mom passed away you know, over 15 years ago. And so it shifted him. And I notice now, especially it shifted him because, you know, he always had my mom to, to do some of the, the, the little things like my mom was very big about buying things for the grandkids and not to mean that not to mean saying that he didn't but you know that was just her thing she was about spoiling her grandkids because she was like that with us as kids and being there for you know when, when babies are born and making sure that 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 presence is there you know I've seen him step into that role more so not that again not that he wouldn't want to be there but it's almost he's the parental representative you know mom is not there but he's trying to be all of that and it was different for him. And I know it was, you know, and, and at some point, you know, I'm going to have him on the show because I want to talk, you know, and I've, I've mentioned this to him that, you know, I want to talk through some of this, you know, because it's 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 an interesting journey. But he grew up in the house with his father and, you know, a gang of siblings. And, you know, it helped to shape who he is. And it helped me to understand, you know, that. For a lot of my family, especially, you know, on my dad's side, so to speak, because and on my mom's side as well. But I know on my dad's side, you know, we had it was a lot of men, you know, a lot of boys in the family. And so, you know, all of my grandmothers, my dad's moms, all of all of her, her, you know, all of her sons that were still living when I was a lot when I was young, you know, and, and growing up, you know, most of them had kids um, you know, and, 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 you know, they were taking care of their families and making sure that things are good, you know, now it wasn't perfect in all situations, but what I know is that the ones that were able, were able, were, took care of their family. So I grew up in an atmosphere where, you know, the men in my dad's side of family and the men in my mom's side of family, they were taking care of their responsibilities. And for me, it was a great example. My dad was there. My dad wasn't just present. My dad was at the baseball games cheering. He was, you know, outside playing basketball with my friends. He was showing me how to cut the grass, showing me how to to do, a, you know, use the barbecue grill, showing me how to tie a tie, doing all these little things. Like that was my dad. He was the dad that I needed, the father that I that I that I so desperately needed and he was always there. And so when I think about my journey in in fatherhood, you know, I always can reference things that my dad did. And even the things that I didn't necessarily agree with, I still use them as lessons of, of how to be better because the whole goal is to be better, right? The whole goal of, of life is to continue to grow each day. And with my father, you know, He wanted to give us, along with my mom, he wanted to give us a better life than what he has and what he had, you know, growing up. And and my 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 granny and my and my granddad, you know, I never really had a chance to meet my grandfather, Henry. But I know that they were hard workers. I know my granny definitely worked hard. I mean, she worked and and did everything she could, you know, to, to help keep and keep her family together. And she did that. 
Um, and just knowing that my dad's goal was to elevate his family to another level higher than him. And it's the same thing with, you know, my wife and I with with our family. You know, we want to take them to the next place. We want to give them so much more than what our, our parents gave us. And it's not like we struggled. I'm not going to say that we, you know, that we were ro- walking around like the Rockefellers, but you know, we, my family, my wife, my, my mom and my dad, they, they did a great job with us. And, you know, so when I look at a lot of things that I do from a father perspective with my kids, it's with my, it's built on the foundation that my dad established. You know, he, he was definitely honest with us. You know, um, he, he was a disciplinarian, um, but he was also fair. He was loving. He played with us. I mean, he, he enjoyed cutting up with us, you know, and, and to this day, I mean, he still does it with even not just not just us as kids, you know, as his kids, but his grandkids, you know, where when I was a kid, I used to be embarrassed about my dad acting goofy and stuff like that. But my friends would laugh and just like, oh, man, your dad is so cool. And now that I grow up, I see how he does with my with our kids, with my kids and it's 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 just funny because I laugh at it. I don't get embarrassed anymore. I'm like that is funny, but I love that they can see their you know a grandparent actually doing what he does, you know, and and having fun and just enjoying life and you know just being able to connect with them at a level that I didn't get a chance to connect with, you know, his dad. And on my mom's side of the family, you know, my grandfather. He drove trucks and he was in and out a lot. So I didn't see him as much. He would come in town for short bursts. So I didn't have that relationship. I had a close relationship with him when I was younger. As I got older, it wasn't quite the same. But, you know, just for my kids to be able to see their granddad and then they've got, you know, on my wife's side, they got they have their grandmother on that side. And she spends a lot of time with them and, you know, spends time with us as a family. So it's good to have that balance. Um, and so that's what I appreciate. And that's what I try to make sure with my kids um, and in our family that, you know, from a father perspective, I continue to to build on that legacy that my grandfather started in my dad and my dad is instilled in me and still working um, in me even this far, you know, this far along. So. You know, as I as I mentioned, you know, I, I go back to when I first found out that my wife and I were expecting. And you have to understand that this was and again, I, I, I go back to some of the stories I've shared bits and pieces of before because I want to make sure it all ties together. Um, but I remember, you know, we were married only for about two months or so. And, you know, my wife was like. You know, I'm, I'm ready to have a baby like we married. We got a house. Let's 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 have this baby. And at first I was like, no, nah, you know, I'm like, why don't we just wait for a year? You know, let's just wait, you know, hang out for a year, travel, do some stuff. You know, we got we got plenty of time. We already got the house. We're married. We got everything straight. You know, let's just take some time and be married, you know, and and. And she was just like, I'm ready. So I was like, you know what? It, it's all good. Let's let's move forward. And so we got pregnant. I mean, literally right then and there, it was almost like it was instantaneous. We were pregnant. So, you know, as I said before, about a about a year into our marriage, you know, we had our daughter, Sinai, and she was born. Eh, let's see. Her birthday is on the 19th. So she was born 10 days before our first anniversary and we spent our first anniversary. We went to Opry Mills because, you know, KK was still sore after delivering a baby and she kind of didn't want to go out too much and be gone too long because uh, because, you know, she didn't want to leave our, our daughter at home. So we went out for a short time, went to Opry Mills, hung out for a bit and then rushed home. And, and I just remember that because. You know, it was just some of the fear. And she was only she was young. So as you can imagine, 10 days old and leaving her for that little short time was was a little nerve wracking. But we knew we were leaving her in good hands. So it wasn't that we didn't trust the people that we were leaving her with. 
Um, but with that whole process, you know, it was just the, the whole time we were away, we were just wondering what she was doing. And it was it was cool to get away, but it was just like we had something so beautiful and so pure and so innocent to go home to. And, you know, before we had her, like I was a nervous wreck. I, I was like man I don't know what I'm doing it it was almost the same anxiety I had before my wedding day you know it wasn't that I wasn't sure you know I was definitely sure of what I wanted to do and I wanted to be married and but it was just something about an event so big and and that's what having you know having a child to me it, it was it was huge um you know and just what I discovered about me during that time like I I was very I, I'm a very laid back person and people who know me they know that I don't get too far up and I don't go too far down you know I, I try to you know stay pretty even most of the time but I, I get excited I you know I don't I, but I don't get crazy with it and I try not to show um I try not to show my hand so to speak you know, if I'm nervous about something or if I'm scared or I'm worried, I try not to show that. I try to stay calm. Um, and that's one quality that, that I have. And sometimes it freaks my wife out because she she thinks I'm being nonchalant about it. But, you know, I, I never really shared with her that I was scared because I didn't want her to feel because I know she was she wasn't nervous about being a mom. And I think she mentioned that before. She wasn't nervous about being a mom. You know, I was just trying to stay calm because the last thing I want her to have to deal with going through the the labor pains and, you know, just the different uncomfortable feelings that she was going through physically, you know, as as the baby was growing inside of her till we got to the point of being close to delivery and then delivering, um, you know, delivering. So now it was it was one of those things where I was just like, you know, I got to stay calm. But, man, I was, you know, they talk about like a duck. On, on on top of a pond you know you see the body and the duck is just still as can be but underneath those little legs are just kicking and that's what it was with me it's like my heart was always pounding like I'm about to be a father you know and it was it was crazy it was like I was excited but then I was like I don't know what's about to happen like my whole life is changing this is what I wanted but my god like why do I feel like this and, and it was thoughts of fear like, I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to. I'm responsible for this little baby. I'm responsible for this life. And, you know, I knew that I would lay down my life for her just the same way as I lay down my life for my wife. And, you know, it was just I was I was, you know, I was just I was like, man, I'm bringing in a, a baby into this crazy world. You know, Am I am I going to mess up? Am I going to do something that's going to lead her to go in a different direction? Am I going to do something that's going to cause her to have pain or heartache in her life? You know, I I don't want to see her heartbroken. I don't want to see her in pain. I don't want to see her, you know, having to deal with challenges in life. And so a part of me wanted to just shield her from everything. I don't want her to, to know any any of the the bad things in the world and you know we 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 didn't we purposely didn't try to shield her from too much but we didn't want her to grow too fast we wanted her to remain a kid we wanted her to be around other kids and you know be able to experience things in life in a in a sort of a a structured environment and so that was one of you know our biggest things KK and I one of our biggest things we wanted to provide structure for her and you know i think we did a great job with that um you know i think now like thinking back then to where she is today you know now she's in college and you know my my dad sort of radar is still just as probably worse now than what it was when she was a kid because when she was a kid she was at home around us so there was a little more freedom to trust her to do stuff because we used to allow sanai to do certain things that you know once we knew we can trust her to do it you know she we let her go up and down the stairs because there was a certain way that she went up and down the stairs and we would see her do it time and time again she didn't walk down the stairs she would lay on her stomach and she would slide all the way down and we had you know the way our in our first house 
it was like you know a few sets a few stairs and then it was like a landing area and then the going up to the top floor there was more stairs so she we didn't care about her going down we always didn't we didn't want her to go up so we had gates and stuff but we just trusted her with certain things you know we had child safety locks on the on the cabinets and all that stuff and we tried to child proof it as much as possible but the older she got and the more the more independent that she wanted to be we allowed her to do that um again within reason so i say that to say now that she's 18 there's still some things that i'm 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 very protective of with her and you know to a point she's my she's the only daughter i have um as a father so that and and i've said this billions of times but that father daughter relationship is something about it there's something about a father son relationship and there's something about a father daughter relationship that you know you just it's hard to explain you know it's hard to explain the bond there and me and her you know we we go at each other jokingly um but it, it's all about love with us and you know seeing her grow you know it's like i i i, I want to see her grow but i don't want to see her grow I want to see her be independent and be the strong woman that we raised her to be. But part of me still wants her to be here with us, you know, and I almost have to be super, I won't say sensitive, but I almost have to be hard about it because I want her to be um, I want her to be independent so much that. And it, and, it, and it pains me to see her grow, but I have to be, it's like, I got to be hard on her sometimes because I don't want to cripple her by making her feel like, you know, that, that making her feel like she has to stay at home and she can't be, do things on her own. Like I want her to learn that part. And some of that I learned from my dad because he was like that. He's definitely like that with me. And I know he was like that in a way with both of my sisters, you know, to to just like he would show them some stuff. But he would just be like, hey, you have to, you know, some things you might have to figure out, you know, or I can help you. I'll, I'll tell you what to do, but you're going to have to go do them. You know, now, obviously, with the things with cars or things like that, he would jump on them because he didn't want her want them to get hurt or anything. Um, but he would he would teach them those kind of things and try to give them freedom to do it. Um and with me, it's the same way. But I think now I'm to the place where it's like I want her to be I want her to be independent um, to the place where, you know, she when she needs us, she'll she'll know and we'll know that she'll need she needs us. But it, it's 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 so hard to explain. And that's why, you know, I say with this podcast, a lot of times I'm, I'm sitting on the laying on the couch and, you know, my transparency hopefully is helping other people who are becoming fathers or fathers now and just you know understanding that man it's it's a beautiful thing but it it comes with its challenges um and knowing for me right now is knowing you know not when i say let go not letting go to where i'm just like i'm not being a father i'm not being protective but how do you loosen those reins how do you how do you say okay you are 18 now I'm going to let you go out there and experience the world because then my wife and I, we have this conversation a lot. You know, we talk about how we were at 18. You know, when I was 18, I left the city of Detroit, my parents home, and I, I came down here to Tennessee to go to Tennessee State. Everybody knows I went to Tennessee State University. And I think about all the stuff I did at 18. Now, I went out there running the streets and nothing, but you know, just simple stuff. I would go to Kroger, you know, by TSU. I would go to Kroger, you know, late at night with my friends. I didn't have a car my freshman year, but I would get in the car with them. Didn't know much about them, but I would just jump in the car and we gone. I would go hang out. You know, I'm out all times of the night. You know, I didn't have a curfew, so to speak. Um, you know, my parents didn't check on me like that. I mean, they checked on me, but it wasn't to the place where it's like, Hey, are you in class right now? Or are you in, you know, are you sleep? And, you know, why are you still up And this? You know, we would talk and they would make sure I'm still breathing. Of course, technology was different. You know, cell phones were starting to be around, but, you know, most people didn't have a cell phone with a plan like they do now. You had 
prepaid minutes and my mom and them they got me well i paid for a phone through my job through working i, I bought myself a phone and they would help me they would put minutes on my card and you know i would use it to talk to them from time to time if they didn't call me in my dorm room so it wasn't like now where we can text and do all the stuff we do today but they were able to keep up with me you know as needed you know but i was pretty much on my own you know i didn't have anybody you know i was i wasn't in the same state with them i wasn't you know my daughter she's an hour away from us um so you know it, it well technically less than an hour so for me to get to her it's not it's nothing you know it's not a long drive it, it's it's quick and so again with that it's knowing that okay she is close by and she is near if i need to get to her but i'm like what if she didn't live that close by what if i couldn't just easily get in the car drive to her and be there you know less than an hour what if she decided to move far away how would i deal with that you know i always say that i tell my wife you know that my our, our daughter was she was and i would struggle with that if you know she couldn't be far away from us but i don't know if if i could be that far away from her of course you know it, it's it's you don't know until you have to deal with it but you know i know it'll be a challenge but again as a father you know you try to be i won't say hard but you try to be tough and like oh she got to grow up and and I, and I tell my wife that like she got to grow up she got to learn this that and the other but in the inside I'm like I don't want her to get too big you know I don't want her to grow I know she's going to get married one day she's going to have she's got a little boyfriend and you know she's living her life and she's growing and figuring things out which she's supposed to and, and as a parent I can't I can't cast a long shadow over her I've got to pull back and let her you know, move the shadow out the way so she can walk in her own light and, and, and be able to experience things because she won't grow because of that, you know, it, it, you know, if I'm doing that. So that's kind of, you know, with, with her, that that's kind of the, the, the struggle that I have, right? The challenge I have right now. So as a father, you know, with daughters, you know, I'll just tell everybody, if you got a daughter, you know, cherish this time when they're young, um, you know, it, it feels like it literally feels like yesterday. You know, I watched her play, you know, her first college basketball game and it was it was crazy. And I can't I can't do anything. I think about when she played her first middle school game. Her first middle school game was her first school ball game. You know, I've seen her play rec league and stuff like that AAU before. But, you know, seeing her play her first school ball game and then seeing her play her first college game and it was a weird feeling it was like man it just seemed like yesterday but that time flew by from when she was in sixth grade playing basketball to now being a, a college freshman and I you know it, it just made me I had to sit back and think about it like this is wild like this time flashed by me um so cherish that time for sure um but yeah daughters there's something I mean you know, I, I I sometimes try to try to avoid it. My wife always says, you know, you always lean on her. You know, you need to be harder on her and, you know, this, that and the other. And, you know, or sometimes I'm being too hard about when it comes to her hanging out with friends or her boyfriend, all that stuff. It's like, oh, you got to, you know, you got to give her some space. And I know as a as a woman, she knows that experience of going through that, um, you know, and not want to not want to keep her on a short leash so that when she does when she now that she's in school and when she gets freedom that she won't know how to act and so I had to loosen up some things on that and you know still working through it but you know we are we are at a better place I'll say that um you know but it, it's been a pleasure with her you know but she she gave she gave me my first experience as a father now when we got around to our, our second born Trey who was 15 now, you know, was a little bit more experienced, you know, with Sinai, we, me as a father, I wasn't as helpful as I needed to be. Um, I didn't, I didn't listen as much to my wife in terms of helping with potty training. And, you know, even at times where, and, and it, it, it wasn't on purpose, but, you know, obviously when somebody's going through something and, you know they they they're dealing with situations and you're not really being involved like you should 
you know, it, it looks like it's a, a purposeful thing that I was, you know, like in the, in the middle of the night, not waking up and, and getting uh, feeding Sanai or changing her and things like that. I wasn't I wasn't good at that. And it wasn't because I was trying not to be. It was just because I'm a head. When I go to sleep, I'm asleep. So unless I hear like, the, like and it wasn't like Sanai would be like yelling, but she would kind of start turning and tossing and you'll hear a little whine and my wife would just instinctively jump up. And for me, I didn't catch it. But by the time I heard anything, she was already in motion out the bed, running, checking on her and everything else. And I, I couldn't really defend, you know, why I didn't get, I'm like, I didn't hear. And I, and I didn't, I, I wouldn't just ignore her, but I really didn't hear. I was, I, I sleep pretty hard, but I had to learn that I have to be attentive. I had to be attentive to to what I was doing and what was going on in the house. And I think that was, again, one of the things that I had to push myself into do was just understanding that I had to be, um, you know, I had to make sure that, again, I'm not just present, but I'm I'm working through things. I'm, I'm changing diapers. I'm waking up and feeding her, making bottles, you know, making sure that I get her dressed, not just, well, I'm here, I'm, I'm here, I'm helping when I can, or when I think about stuff, like, I had to change that mentality, so when Trey came around, you know, it was a little different, I was better, obviously excited, you know, because now the excitement was, I have a boy, I have a son, and so, you know, having a son and being able to pass down the name that was passed to me, being able to pass that down to him, you know, it was very exciting. Um, and, you know, with Trey, Trey came in during um, a, a difficult time in, in my family's life, you know, because when Trey was born and I, you know, shared the story a little bit, my mom had just passed away. So you had about a three month gap between the time Trey between the time my mother passed away and the time Trey was born and that was one of the things I think you know it hurt me obviously to lose my mom but see if you knew my mom you know how she is about her grandbabies I mean she loved her kids but when it came to her grandbabies it was a whole different story and so when I used to talk to her on the phone she was before she passed it was like you know she was like I'm, I'm holding on I'm, I'm gonna fight this so I gotta be here to see my baby Trey and you know so I have I can have him come up here with Sinai and all you know and you know my, my other nieces and nephews you know uh, Nia Malika Makai so at the time you know my mom had four or sorry had three grandbabies I'm sorry I had four grandbabies so it was um you know it was my sister's kids who they're they're the three oldest in the family uh well technically they're not nia my is my oldest niece and then sanai and then uh my twin nephews malika and makai come after come after them and then trey uh is is kind of coming in at the the fifth born of the the thomas grandbabies and you know when he came along you know my mom was just excited like the rest of them you know got another grandbaby and she she was just like wow this is great um but she you know unfortunately passed away so you know that was some of the the hurt that I felt uh, for her not to be able to see him in in the flesh and hold him and you know just knowing that that she would love and spoil him you know because Trey Trey is very affectionate you know he's he was very loving as a little kid even now you know even though he's a teenager and he think his stuff don't stink now um you know he does have those moments where he's still very affectionate you know wants love and things like that so I know I know my mom would have definitely um loved spending time and and you know building that relationship with him but Trey came along during that point and there was so much other stuff going on it was you know um, you know, KK had decided to walk away from Saturn, took a package from Saturn uh, because of uh, they were closed. They were, you know, looking to close down that plant. And so we didn't want to move. She decided that, you know, I, I really want to, you know, we, we don't want to move to Louisiana, that some part of Louisiana. I can't remember which part. And so she was like, you know what? I'm just going to take the package. 
I'm gonna be at home for a year. I get paid for a year, so I'm gonna just do this, and you know, we'll you know we'll figure it out. And you know, Trey came along, and you know he brought he brought light to the family in a dark time, you know, and and it was you know Sanai had her you know her brother, and they were very close, you know. She was probably one of the biggest helps with him, making sure he had stuff, helping change his diapers, going to get him formula or his bottle. And, you know, she was a great little helper. And, you know, me, I was maturing as a father, you know, trying to figure stuff out, um, you know, and, and just it was it was different because now I got two kids and, you know, it was a pride thing. You know, I'm like, man, you know, look at my kids, you know, I got a beautiful daughter, handsome little son and, um but it was different because it's like, man, I got I got two now and I want to show my son how to be a good man and a good husband, you know, and, and how to take care of his family and, you know, how to how to treat a, a, his wife and, you know, just the things that a father wants to teach their son. And in the process, you know, I was going through so many things with work and, you know, just trying to balance dealing with my mom and. You know, when Trey was born, I was actually, he was born, I think, a couple weeks. I'll take that back. After he was born, I was probably working at my the job at the time. You know, I was going through a lot of challenges there. And, um, you know, I, I left that job probably, I think about six months after he was born, I wound up going to a different job and, you know, being able to make some more money because, again, we were going through some, some financial challenges at the time. Um so a lot was going on and that as from a father standpoint that's what really tests you as a person you know they say if you want to see what's really in somebody inside of somebody you you got to be squeeze you got to you know they got to squeeze them and that's not a, a literal that's not a, 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 a you know an actual thing it's more of a you know spiritually you know integrity things like that you know those intangible things that you know, when you go through pressure situations, you're either going to come out a diamond or you're going to come out a, a lump of coal. You know, which one are you going to be? And, you know, I was definitely tested. You know, I was tested a lot during that time. Um, you know, my marriage was being tested. You know, my my sanity was being tested. I mean, it was a it was a dark moment. It was one of the few dark moments that I've had in my life. And it wasn't because of my wife it wasn't because of the kids it was just because of so many things that were going on and I was trying to figure out how to cope with everything so again as a father you know I've got to be there not just be present for my kids but making sure that I'm around I'm helping I'm I'm you know talking and playing with them you know building that relationship because you know, they're young and they're young, they're growing and all the other things that could have happened. You know, like I said, my marriage was going through some wild times, you know, and it was just because I don't think it was because of, of us necessarily not liking each other. But there was some mature, you know, some things that we had to do to mature because, again, we had two our first two kids within the first five years of our marriage. And, you know, statistically speaking, those are the roughest, usually the roughest points of a marriage. And if a marriage can make it to five years, that's a good thing. Some marriages, they say the average marriage can make it, I think they say eight years. Um, now, you know, one, one statistic I saw, you know, here we are 19 years later. But, you know, that it was a challenge and, and you know, I kept going back to draw on experiences that I had growing up and thinking about different challenges that I had with my, you know, in my household growing up with my father. And I'm sure there's things that he didn't share with me and my mom didn't share with me as a kid of what they were experiencing. But I know they had challenges, you know, financially at times. I know that they tried to do everything they could. I mean, my mom and dad wanted us to go to good schools. Um... You know, we went to the neighborhood uh, Catholic school. You know, we just were blessed to have a Catholic school right in our neighborhood. And it was the church that we grew up at, um, Jesu Catholic Church. And we all went to Jesu Elementary School that went from K through eighth grade. 
and you know but they paid for that so and then they wanted us to go to great high schools you know so uh my, my older sister she went to mercy you know so she took the bus and my mom and, you know my mom and dad were doing what they can to give her you know the best life from an education standpoint and they sent me to university of detroit high school jesuit high school so i went to u of d you know great high school i had family members that went there before and you know it was just they wanted to give them the best education possible give us the best and, and they, my mom wanted us to have that you know um and i told the story before i didn't want to go there i wanted to go to cast tech or renaissance but it didn't happen um, but i'm thankful for the opportunity because my mom wanted me to have a different experience and it's not that those schools are bad those schools are great schools i just you know just didn't it, it, that's not what they wanted for me um you know, and then my little brother and little sister had the opportunity to go to different schools, but they wound up going to schools that fit them. Um, so knowing those things and understanding from a kid's perspective, we had to I looked at those experiences with our kids. So, you know, all that going on and, you know, and I getting older and starting school and Trey getting older and, you know, just having him as a as a you know again as a son and he was looking at everything i did it reminded me of me with my father you know if if i was going to do this you know you know walking around i have to go try to fix something in the house that's what my dad you know i remember doing that with my dad you know trying to you know just just anything you know being sitting on the computer all day you know doing stuff whether it was you know back in the day when people were downloading music a lot um, you know, and just he would sit there on my lap and do that, play games. You know, I played video games a lot back then, probably more than I should have. But that was kind of my way of winding down, you know, after a long day of work and stuff. And they would be up with me playing video games and, you know, or watching me play and they would fall asleep in my arms. You know, those experiences are just things that for me, I just, you know, I, I love having them. But I, I remember again just different things that I used to do with my dad growing up and now being able to do some of these things with, with our kids. Um, like I said, when, when Trey came along, it was, you know, he was, he brought light into our family. Um, and he was definitely, uh, he was definitely what I would call an angel baby. And I know my mom, you know, was making sure that all that came through that we came out and everything was good. So I, I felt fortunate uh, to have him during that time. And we grew stronger as a family and, you know, we did grow stronger. We got through, you know, those, those years and, you know, then here comes Christian and, you know, as the baby of the bunch, Christian is definitely, in, he, he's interesting. I say that in a great way because, um, you know, my, my grandmother, my dad's mom, I call her granny, my granny before she, you know, she used to come down here and I was so blessed and fortunate to spend time with her. And she was able to spend time with our family, staying at our house and just hanging out with us. But she would always say that Christian reminded her of my dad growing up. And it's just funny how, you know, certain things skip certain generations, but I didn't notice it much as much until you know, my, my granny pointed it out to me, but Christian and my dad had the same mannerisms and mannerisms and everything that they, you know, they didn't even spend a lot of time together. We were down. My dad came down one time and Christian just was sitting on the couch just naturally with his leg folded. And it was the same leg that my dad had. My dad was down here and, you know, we I noticed that I, I knew Christian used to fold his legs before. But I never really paid attention to who it looked like until I saw my dad do it. And they were just my dad was was asleep on the couch. Christian was on the other side of the couch sleep and they both had their legs folded the same. I mean, it was crazy of how it looked. But, you know, genetics, you know, I guess you can say. But just a lot of stuff that they do. My Christian is a he's a deep thinker. And my dad is is a deep thinker as well. I mean, they they break down stuff you know, try to figure out how something works, you know, and, and I, I have some of that for my dad too. That's why the, the field that I'm in, you know, in terms of, you know, quality assurance, software testing, stuff like that, you know, to, I, I like to see how stuff works, like break it apart, tear it apart and try to put it back together. 
and my dad you know he 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 does a lot of that stuff with work around the house he likes to tear up stuff and build up and all that christian is the same way that's why christian loves legos he loves to build legos and then tear them apart and do something different with them so you know christian comes along and you know i call it we're, we're going through different points in our lives you know financially we're more prosperous and you know we're we're getting to a different place and we're growing stronger in our in our marriage and the family is growing stronger and christian comes aboard and you know he was it was interesting with him because you know he was born with um i, I know we told this before but you know with the kidney situation the the multi-cystic displaced the kidney and basically he just had a bunch of cysts on one of his kidneys and so you know that was a very scary situation because if you want to test or if you want to break a man down let something go on with his family and so emotionally you know I was I was praying and to my wife and probably to Sinai and Trey they probably thought like dad it seems to be pretty good but I cried so much behind closed doors because I didn't want my son to to come into this world having to fight the way that some people have to fight in those situations. You know, you, you never want to hear about there's a potential birth defect in your child. There's something that isn't right, you know, and it's scary. It, it scared the mess out of me. I mean, it was... It was one of those things where my faith was tested at a whole different place, you know, and, and I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to do. Um, I just prayed. But I, again, I tried to be the, the rock for KK because, you know, she was, you know, she was feeling, you know, she was her, she was fighting it. She was fighting it. But her, she was you know walking her faith out. Um, but it's hard to hear stuff like that. You know, and then having to hear the doctors, you know, as I said before, the doctors are telling us that, hey, yeah, well, it's not the end of the world. Like he can still live just fine with one kidney. And, you know, they're giving their diagnosis and saying, oh, he should we got to monitor this and, you know, we'll check and see. But more than likely, he'll lose that kidney. His other kidney will just grow and be big enough to, to do what it needs to do to function for both of them. It's not a big deal. And we're like, no. You know, we don't want, first of all, it was like, why, you know, we, we had that moment of why us, why him? And then we stepped back and was like, you know what? We not, we understand the doctor had to do her part. She had to say what she had to say because she's got to be, she's got to give the truth, her truth. But we just kept praying and believing like, you know, he's not going to be, his kidney is going to be fine. He's going to have use of both kidneys and everything is good. And it was, it was trying through those times, but um, you know, just coming into this world, you know, Christian has been, you know, he's been defying odds, you know, and he's growing strong. Um, you know, the last time we took him to, uh, his, his doctor, um, for his kidney, you know, she, she did x-ray. She was like, well, you know, she was telling us like, she was actually shocked. Like, well, the kidney is actually still there. Cause they thought by the time he turned, like I think two or something, it was supposed to just be dissolved and gone. Well, it hadn't dissolved. It had grown. The cyst had all went away and the kidney had some function to it, you know, and it kept growing. We had, but we had spoke that, um, you know, we had prayed about it. Our church family prayed about it. You know, our apostle, our pastor, Apostle Howard, you know, he, he, he said he is going, they going, they going to find nothing wrong. Christian is going to grow and be strong. And, you know, he has been, he, he is, um, you know, we still try to make sure that we're, we're being careful about certain things, but. You know, he's played sports. He wants to play basketball. And so he's trying to get into that uh, like his brother and sister. But, you know, he has he has been, again, another ray of sunshine in our family. You know, he's silly. He he's like he we used to call him like when he was younger. He looked like a papa, you know, because he's grown hairy and used to have a grumpy face. But now he's so the dude is so wise. You know, he knows so much stuff. He's smart. Um, and it's a scary smart and the conversations that he can hold with you about scientific things. But then he's got like this strong faith about him. You know, he, he's got that childlike faith where he believes everything 
you know, everything that, that, that we do, you know, that God to do it, you know, and, and it's a good thing to have, you know, you can say, well, we blame us for going, taking him to church and teaching him the things. But, you know, I think our church would have in that because his faith is, his faith is strong and it calls in stuff. You know, we told the story about our kids and they use their faith to get this, to help us get this house. You know, their faith and speaking what they, they kept speaking. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. And Christian was one of the first ones like you guys are rich and it's not about being rich. It was just being faithful and, and, you know, God giving us the desires of our heart. So, you know, Christian has been, you know, he, he's the, he's the, we call him the different child, you know, in a good way. He, he's been great. And all of them together, you know, one thing as a, as a father that I learned is all of our kids together that have different strengths and weaknesses, um, they have different characteristics, but I love them the same, but, but definitely there's a difference. And it's not that I love one more than the other, but there's a different type of love that each one needs. You know, Christian doesn't need a lot of hand holding. He doesn't need you to, you know, he, he doesn't need you to, he, he's sure of himself in a lot of ways. You know, he knows that we love him. He knows that, you know, we're there. We're going to, we're going to make sure he's good. And he speaks, I mean, he's very confident about that. Like you guys got it. You guys are do that. You know, he, he's very confident like that. Sinai, she, she needs a little bit more of that attention. Um, you know, and Trey is kind of in between the two, you know, He's a middle child, but, you know, he's affectionate, but, you know, he has his moments where he doesn't want attention and he has his moments when he's like, I need it. You know, Christian, like I said, he doesn't need it as much at all. You know, and, and Sinai, Christian can be doing stuff all day and, you know, he you, you won't see him unless he just needs your help or something. And he tries not to do that. So he's very self-sufficient. And part of that being the youngest is having older siblings who... You know, and, and being around adults and older siblings, like he he's his maturity is a little different. You know, he's still a kid and we, we keep him being a kid. He's only 11, you know, but we try to balance that out because, again, I see some 11 year olds acting like they grown. And, you know, I don't we don't like that. So as a father, we try to make sure that balance is there. But, you know, just seeing them all together, um, just just interact with each other. You know, I think Christian and, and Sinai, I call them the bookends, but I think they're they're at a different place right now. Trey and Christian are kind of in that bumping heads phase. You know, Christian is the, the younger, um, annoying brother. Trey's the cool teenager. And then you got Sinai, who's, you know, the semi-adult who when she comes home, she, she, you know, wants Christian to sleep in the room with her or she hangs out with Christian and Trey and Christian kind of, they sometimes they, they do it, but they're butt heads. And so they're going through this weird stage. So again, you know, you sit back and watch as a parent, as a father, and you're like, you know, trying to referee some things, my wife and I refereeing, but some things you just kind of let it go. Um, but it's, it's, it's just a beautiful thing, you know, and that's why, you know, I, I feel sympathy for men who want to be great fathers, but they have situations that are not allowing them to be able to be fathers. Um, and whatever the case may be, you know, and I'm not going to say because of the, the, the child's mother. I mean, there are situations where the child's mother keeps them away. There are situations that, you know, the, the father may have caused. There's all kinds of situations that, that come about. But it does, it bothers me when I see a father really fighting to be um, a, a father, fighting to be a father and not have an opportunity to do so. And I always pray that God will, will make a way, you know, not to separate the child from the mother necessarily, but that they will work it out to be able to co-parent in peace because a child needs both parents. A father is just as important as a mother. They bring different things to the table. As a, as a man, as a father, there are things that we bring to the table to our kids, for our kids, that a mother can't provide. And vice versa. There's things that a mother can do that a father can't. But the family wasn't designed to be without each of those roles. Circumstances do happen. Yes, I, and I get it. 
Uh, but but we are supposed to have kids grow up in, in that traditional family. You say traditional, but that was the biblical family. That was the strength. You know, and even from the African-American communities, they, you know, it was known that if you take out the man from the family, you take you can have easy access over that family because that's how much the father was the provider, the, the protector and all those things. So understanding that a family functions when it has all of its parts working together you know when a father isn't there that that's that's a problem you know and to the to the fathers who haven't been dads not because of somebody keeping them away but just because of um some of those things in your past that you know your upbringing where you weren't um you didn't have a father around or your father left you or from past hurt you know, or dealing with different situations that, you know, father wasn't looked at in the, in the best light. I just want to encourage you to never give up on your father, never give up on having a relationship with a father. Um, and just because you had that experience, your kids don't, don't have to experience those things. You know, it, it's, it's like I said, for me, it's the greatest thing that I'm, I'm not going to judge. I'm not judging anybody. Um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to recognize any I mean, sorry, I don't want to to antagonize anybody on this. You know, everybody has their own situations to deal with. But if you have kids, you know, cherish those times. You know, one of the things that, like I said before, we don't want to we, we try not to have our kids grow up too soon because we want them to enjoy their childhood because we know what adulthood has for them. You know, we know what the world has for our kids and what the world is selling our kids is something that they're not necessarily prepared for. And so that's why it's important as parents and as fathers, we have to do our jobs. We can't let the world tell us how to do our jobs. We have to use our instincts that we're going to that we develop, work with our wives, our spouses, our, our, our children's mothers and try to figure out how we can create a loving environment, even if it's not the traditional household. How can we make sure that our children are being raised with the appropriate roles in, in the family? And that, that's going to hit some people because they say, oh, it doesn't have to be that way. Look, I'm just going off of my experience. I'm not looking down on anybody else that has a family structure that's different. You know, and that, that if whether it's, you know, same sex marriages and they adopt and all that stuff. The whole point is having proper roles, having the responsibility of a father. If there is if there is a father that is alive and around that father, if they choose to be, if they are adequate enough to be. So let me preface that. They have to be obviously able to do so because having a, a volatile parent in a relationship or in that family structure can mess up a child's life just as much as having the father there there can impact him in a positive way so you don't want to bring drama that's going to hurt them for the long run but you know it, it's 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 really all about being there for your kids that's that's the biggest thing being there making sure that that you are doing everything you can to grow you know, there's if, if there's things in your past, seek professional counseling, get help. If you have things about your past with your father that you can't deal with, that you haven't been able to deal with, seek help. Your kids, our kids deserve to grow and to develop and to have healthy relationships within their household, because those healthy relationships within their household, within the household are going to be the things that drive them to a different place so again i just thank you all for listening um to fatherhood part two uh, i really appreciate this i hope you hear my heart um and, and as i share this journey about fatherhood you know again it, it doesn't stop here like i said my kids are 18 15 and 11 and we're going through different seasons now I'm getting older, getting wiser, but, you know, the, 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 the job of a father doesn't change because your kids get older. It doesn't, you still have that role. Things shift, different seasons come aboard, 
now you're having different conversations and those are things that I'm having now, you know, having to explain certain things to my boys about how to be responsible young men going out into the world and, and how the world may or may not view you. Having those conversations with my daughter about being careful about where she goes, being um, attentive to certain areas that she goes into. Don't pick up things or let anybody give you things if you go to a party. Those are conversations that I have to have now. You know, don't get in the car with strangers. Even if a friend says, so if you don't know them, you got to be careful. You know, it, it's the unfortunate part of growing up, but it's a part of a father to make sure to remind them. But I think it's 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 important for us as as fathers to and from my perspective, I'll just say as a dad, as a father, I want to make sure that my kids are prepared to encounter as much as possible. Now, you can't prepare them for everything. There are scenarios that that will happen. There's things that they will experience that I would have never experienced in my childhood at that age they've already experienced so much technology has given them access to things that that i would have never dreamed of being able to do or experience at a young age however knowing that and in preparing them for those things and making sure they mentally and physically and, and spiritually you know know that some of these things are out there is is part of our roles as fathers you know, more than just protecting them, but also educating them on things. And our kids, you know, sometimes they don't want to hear it, but the truth is the truth. And you got to you got to be able to share certain things, especially as they get of age and you know that they can handle um, the knowledge that you're some of the knowledge that you're sharing and, and how they're going to mature and just overall do things. So, um, yeah, it's it's fatherhood is 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 a, a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Um, it's not a perfect science. It, it, it's a lot of love. It's a lot of crying. It's a lot of challenge. It's, it's some struggle, but it's a relationship to, to, you know, it's a relationship that's worth having. It is an important relationship. And that's why, you know, it, it's up to us to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. It is so important for us to keep fighting, um, to, to be fathers dads for our kids to not give up on them the same way you know same way that god doesn't give up on us we mess up you know we we know right from wrong you know especially those that are that are followers of christ we we read his word we we've got laws and precepts and principles and all these things and yet still we mess up, but God still loves us. There's some correction that takes place, but he still loves us through it and helps us to get to that next place. And that's the love of a father, that agape love. And we've got to make sure as fathers that we're doing that, that we're giving our kids that agape, unconditional love. Unconditional love does not mean that it is free from rebuke. It is not free from discipline, but it means that even through it all, you still love your kids. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's things that you never thought you would have to do, but you do it based off of what you believe is the best. So again, as a kingdom heir, you know, we are, we are called to be joint heirs with Christ and all the blessings that come with it. And some, through some of that, there is some, some, some persecution that comes with it. As fathers, we face some persecution. We face some challenges. But if we're doing what we're supposed to do and flowing with what Christ has had, would have us to do what God created us to be and purposed us to be. And we'll make it fine. Our families will be fine. Our kids will be great. Our marriages will be wonderful. And all in all, we will we'll prosper through everything. So I love you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode. Please feel free to reach out to me on Airflow Podcast at gmail.com check out the website airflowpodcast.com uh, please share the episodes if you know people uh, especially if you know young fathers or young men who are uh, looking to become dads or i say looking to become dad that are that are in the process of uh, having a baby soon um, please share it i would love to get feedback and you know if there are young fathers out there that that you know would would 
that you would want me to speak to or even interview on the show, please send them the email and tell them to reach out to me um, at airflowpodcast at gmail.com. You know, I would love to uh, bring them on and, and to be able to talk through some of this stuff because we need that. Um, you know, especially for men, we, we need a sounding board for things. And sometimes talking to other men, they say is iron sharpen iron. Um, you know, we, we have to be able to sharpen each other. And so, uh, as always, I'm interested in doing that, you know, having these discussions and building and growing the community, our community of, of believers as fathers, as mothers, as daughters, sons, you know, whatever role you play, the goal is to, to conquer for the kingdom and to be better people all around. So again, I thank you all for listening. I pray that you have a great great rest of your day or evening whichever it should be and just know that as the air you were created to flow so flow on god bless you all